Now the next set of exercise is regarding the types of adverbs. So all of you know what a verb is. A verb is a word that shows an action. So an adverb is a word that describes a verb or an action. The degree of a verb, an adjective or another adverb. If you look at these examples given here. The four lawyers rode slowly. They heard a great fluttering over their heads. Soon the three lawyers stopped at a spring. You see the words given in a different color here. Here the word slowly shows the manner of that action. How the action was completed. The four lawyers strode slowly. In the second example, you see this word great. They heard a great fluttering over their heads. The word great here shows that extent or that degree of fluttering. In the third example, soon the three lawyers stopped at a spring. The word soon, it shows the time of that verb in the sentence. So all these highlighted words, slowly, great, soon, are examples of adverbs, words that describe the verb. Clear? Now, adverbs are of four types. There are adverbs of manner, adverbs of place, adverbs of time, and adverbs of degree. Let's see each one of this. Look at these examples here. He held them gently. How did he hold them? He hold them gently. You see this word here, gently. It is how he held it, the manner of holding it. He put the birds back softly. How did he put them back? He put them back softly. These verbs or these adverbs show how the action is done. The manner of the action. So words like these or adverbs like these are called adverbs of manner. And they show how an action is done. Now you have adverbs of place. Look at the examples. They heard a great fluttering over their heads. Where? Over their heads. He looked up to find the nest from where they had fallen. So the words over and where. These adverbs tell where the action is done, the place of its occurrence. So adverbs such as these which show where an action is done are called adverbs of place. Now you have adverbs of time. You must leave tomorrow. She fed the young boy yesterday. So adverbs such as tomorrow and yesterday tell us when an action is done, the time of it. So such adverbs are called adverbs of time. We have adverbs of degree. Look at these examples. It is extremely cold. The word extremely describes the extent or the degree of that coldness. The sun was already setting. He walked very quickly. How he walked? Very quickly. So these words extremely, already and very. So adverbs like this are called adverbs of degree. Clear? Now keep all these things in your mind and move on to exercise B in page number 26. You can pause the video, finish the questions and come back. Hope you are done with that exercise. Now let's look at the answers. Fill in the blanks with suitable adverbs from the box and they are given a few options. Let's see which are the correct options. Question number one, he will submit his report by evening dash. He will submit his report by evening today. So it shows the time of the submission. So it is an adverb of time. So question number two, it is raining dash, we cannot go out to play. So which is the correct option? It is raining heavily. We cannot go out to play. Now question number three. We took an dash flight to London this morning. We took an early flight to London this morning. It shows the time of the action. 
So the adverb early is an adverb of time. The next question, fourth one, sit dash and wait for me. Sit here and wait for me. An adverb of place. Now the next question, the old man can dash here without his hearing aid. The old man can hardly hear without his hearing aid. The plate was dash hot. You can have two options there. You can either write very or extremely. So it can be the plate was very hot or you can write the plate was extremely hot. So these words, these adverbs are adverbs of degree. They show the degree of the adjective. Now the seventh one. There is not a speck of dust dash. There is not a speck of dust anywhere. An adverb of place. Now the last one, question number eight. Jenny runs dash fast. Jenny runs, you can either write Jenny runs very fast or you can write Jenny runs extremely fast. Adverbs of degree. So I hope you have done these questions correctly. Now let's move on to the next set of exercise. Now write the adverbs in exercise B in the correct boxes according to their types. So you have already learned the types of adverbs and you have already done exercise B. You know the words which are, you know the adverbs we wrote there and you know the types. You please complete this table and you have to write the adverbs of manner in this column, adverbs of place in this one, adverbs of time here and adverbs of degree here. You can pause the video, finish the activity and come back. Hope you are done with that. Now let's check the answers. Now which are the adverbs of manner described in exercise B? The adverbs of manner were heavily and hardly. And which were the adverbs of place? The adverbs of place were here and anywhere. And the adverbs of time were today and early. And adverbs of degree were very and extremely. I hope you have done this correctly. Now let's move on to exercise D. Make sentences to describe these pictures. Use the adverbs given in brackets. What has been done for you? So in this exercise, for each question, you can see a picture like this. You observe the picture very carefully and you have to use adverbs given in the bracket provided for each question to make a meaningful sentence describing the picture given. So in this example, you can see a wolf hiding behind a tree and there is this girl there. So an example sentence is given here. The wolf crept behind the tree quietly and the adverb quietly was given in the bracket. Now you can see a few more questions similar to this in the exercise. You have to observe the picture given alongside carefully and you have to use the adverb given in the bracket for each question and using that you have to make a meaningful sentence describing the picture. You can pause the video, finish the exercise and come back. Hope you are done with that exercise. Now let's look at the answers. Question number two, what is the adverb given in the bracket? It is interestingly. And you see the picture given alongside, you can see a grandmother reading stories to the children. So let's write a sentence using the adverb given in the bracket describing this picture here. Grandmother told stories interestingly. Now the next question, question number three, the adverb given there is excitedly. And you can see a few children decorating the Christmas tree. So let's write a sentence. Children decorated the tree excitedly. Turn the page, page number 28. The fourth question, the adverb given there is happily. And in the picture, you can see a few children playing with the snowman. So let's write the sentence. Children played with the snowman happily. Now, the fifth one, you can see a man carrying a pudding. And you can see the adverb given there carefully. So let's write the sentence. The chef 
carry the pudding carefully. And question number six. You can see a girl dancing and you are given the adverb gracefully. So let's write the sentence. Mira danced gracefully. And question number seven. The option given there is peacefully and you can see a boy sleeping there. So let's write a sentence. The tired boy slept peacefully. And question number eight. You are given the option angrily and you can see a boy standing near a girl looking angry. So let's write a sentence. He looked angrily at the little girl. Hope these questions are clear to you. Now let's move on to the next exercise. Listening. Listen to a passage about a tree and fill in the blanks. Now let me read out a passage to you. Please listen carefully and then you have to answer the questions given in the listening session. So let me read out the passage to you. Mango tree. The name mango is derived from the word manga. Mango tree is an evergreen tree that grows up to an average height of 15 to 18 meters. The average length of its leaves is 30 centimeters. The flowers are pink in color and the fruits can weigh up to 2 kilograms each. Hope you listened to the passage carefully. If needed, you can replay the video and listen to it again. Finish the questions given along with this session and come back. Hope you are done with that. Now let's look at the answers to these questions. Name of the tree. What is the name of the tree? It is mango tree. Type of tree. What type of tree is a mango tree? A mango tree is an evergreen tree. An average height. The mango tree grows up to an average height of 15 to 18 meters. Average length of the leaves. The average length of its leaves is 30 centimeters. Color of the flowers. The flowers are pink in color. So the color of the flowers is pink. The fruit can weigh up to. Fruits can weigh up to 2 kilograms each. We can write 2 kilograms there. The name is derived from the word. The name mango is derived from the word manga. Clear? Now, before we move on to the next set of exercise, let's learn about anagrams. What do you mean by anagrams? Anagrams are words which are formed by rearranging the letters of a given word. See these examples here. Live, you have these letters L I V E. And these letters are rearranged to form the word wave. The same set of letters arranged differently. But it has a meaning. Now, life. The letters can be rearranged and the word file can be formed. Here, hair. Trees, steer. Now, on. So, what are anagrams? When you rearrange the letters of a given word to form a new word with a meaning, that new word is called an anagram. So, now, all of you please move on to the spelling session from the exercises it's about anagrams make anagrams by rearranging the letters of these words and you are given six choices there you can pause the video for this is activity and come back hope you are done with that now let's look at the answers question one you are given the word lap so let's rearrange the letters and we get the word pal which means a friend now question number two you are given the word state. Rearranging the letters, we get the word taste. Now, three, you are given the word turn. Rearranging the letters, give us the word not. N O T E. Now, four, you are given reap. Rearranging the letters, we get the word pair. Now, five, you are given care. Rearranging, we get race. Question number six, you are given dear. Rearranging the letters give you the word read. Hope you have done this correctly. Now, let's move on to the next set of exercise. It's about creative writing. In the reader, 
you read about Abraham Lincoln who showed kindness towards the little birds. Write a paragraph describing how you would take care of plants and animals in your surroundings. You may use the following hints for your answer. Water plants, not trouble stray dogs, not burst firecrackers, not destroy nests. So here, you are supposed to write a paragraph using the hints given here. Suppose you have a garden, you have to write about what type of plants you have in your garden and how you take care of them, how you water them, how you pamper them and you might have seen stray dogs on the streets and you might have seen some people doing harm to them. You have to write about your take on how to treat these stray dogs. You have to write about how bursting firecrackers during festivals or other functions affect them. And uh, there are people who destroy the nests of birds. What do you feel about this? You can write also about it in the paragraph. Once you're done with the writing, you please take a picture and send it to us through Teams. So that's all for today, children. Go through all the exercise once again, read the chapter once again, and we will meet in the next class with a new chapter. Until then, bye.